Last week, we saw how to draw freehand splines and constrain them to surfaces. And this is just a slightly more complex version of what we did last week, in which I've simply got more lines. And they're being displayed as renderable, so they show up as tubes in the viewport here. And if we get in close and examine this, we can see that there are lots of areas where the splines intersect. And to help correct this, we can apply a modifier called spline overlap. To manage your expectations, the spline overlap modifier will be able to correct some of these areas and displace the splines where there are very simple intersections such as this where only two splines are overlapping. But in the more complicated areas, it may not be able to figure out what should be on top of what. In that case, you may need to go back and edit the spline manually later. I'll select the spline, go into the Modify panel. In this case, it's a freehand spline object, but it could be any type of shape, including an editable spline or a shape primitive such as a star. In the Rendering tab, I have enabled rendering in the renderer and the viewport with a radial thickness of one centimeter. Let's add the modifier. From the modifier list, scroll down, and you're looking for spline overlap. Add that modifier, and the spline moves. And we can see the effect by turning the modifier on and off again. All right, that's pretty cool. We see we've got a thickness and a drape parameter. Let's take a look in one of these areas here where it's fairly obvious what's going on. So thickness is the thickness for collisions, and it's got a value of one here. We just saw that the radius is one centimeter, so clearly this is not in scene units. Let's reduce this to 0.25, and now we're getting a pretty nice effect here. Just so that we can see the effect of the drape, let's bring this up to 0.5. And drape is the shape of the overlap. And it ranges from zero to 100. We can bring it down to zero. And we can see that these areas that are not overlapping actually moved up a little bit. There's a bit of a subtle effect. Maybe if we get in really close, we can see that. So here's the drape of zero. Let's bring it to its maximum of 100 and press enter. And with a drape of 100, we're getting better conforming to the original surface. Okay, so I'll bring my thickness back down to 0 0.25. And that looks pretty good in, again, those simple areas, but there are some errors. I've given it kind of a tough job to accomplish here. The default drape was 50, so let's set it to its default. And as we look around here, we can see that there are lots of areas that are not quite Right. We could increase the thickness. That's one way to help this along. I could set it to maybe 0.75. But that's going to actually deviate a lot of the splines that I don't want to move. There's a little trick we can do here. I'll set the thickness back to 0.25 and stack the spline overlap modifiers in order to give a sort of iterative algorithm to this. I'll right-click on the spline overlap and copy it and then right click and paste. And now I've got two of them. They're not instanced, so they have separate parameter values. But we can see that if we turn the upper one off and on again, that we're having a bit more control over this than if we had merely increased the thickness on a single modifier. I'll actually stack one more on here. I'll right click and paste again. And now I've got three of them. And from a distance, this will probably be enough, actually. You might be able to get away with that. We'll have minimal editing to do, except for maybe areas where the spline's actually intersecting. We're not ready to go into low-level editing of individual vertices just yet. We've still got a couple of automated tricks up our sleeve with the optimize and normalize spline modifiers. And we'll take a look at those in the next couple of weeks in this series.